Thanks. Um, yes, and so the Public Policy Center, we primarily do broader impacts type stuff. And so you'll see that this really is a broader impacts type of project. Um, this research is part of an NSF-funded EPSCOR grant uh, led by Oklahoma State University and involving University of Nebraska-Lincoln, University of Kentucky, Kentucky, University of Oklahoma, and uh, this is our team, uh, most of whom get paid for playing with drones, not me. Um, but anyway, what, what our researchers on this project are getting paid to do is to um, play with drones in bad weather. So they're exploring how to use various different types of drones to predict tornadoes, to learn more about the weather, and so on. While they're playing with their toys, myself and Janelle, who I think left, uh, she's also from the Public Policy Center, are trying to figure out what people think about these things. We're interested in understanding uh, why, how, what the public thinks and feels during the development of new technologies because we think it could result in more responsible innovation. So what we're talking about here is two-way communication or three-way communication or cyclical communication where, as Chuck mentioned this morning, people are responding to what the public thinks. If you ask me, one of the best ways to get people engaged is to actually listen to them, not to talk to them. So that's what we're trying to do in a big way. Um, and the idea of responsible innovation is that if you invite people to give their ideas, you're going to stand a much better chance of integrating your science, your technology, your new discovers, discoveries into society because all I need to do is probably mention genetically modified foods to let you know that how the public responds has a big impact on how well or how much the public absorbs the technology. So we have conducted uh, three studies to date. I put all these numbers here so that you'd believe that we did them. But the uh, <laughs> simple thing is in studies uh, one and two, we involved about 800 people in two waves of the MTurk uh, survey separated by a year. They varied communicate communication factors, including the term we used for the technology, the framing of the purpose of the technology, certain drone factors, well, just one, autonomy, and then use factors. Study three involved fewer people, uh, but we took about 35 of those people from that survey out and did focus groups with them to really dive in much more deeply into what was kind of driving their support for or resistance to this technology, especially looking at the various purposes of the uh, technology. So here are some of our major findings. Um, first of all, you can call, if you're a journalist, you can call drone whatever you want. People don't care. You can call it a drone, a UAV, a UAS, an aerial robot. If you use those other terms, people will say, how come you're not just calling it a drone? Um, the support does not seem to vary so far by drone characteristics, so it, people don't seem to care if it's fully autonomous, partially autonomous. Uh, others have done studies with regards to how they look, and they, really people think a drone is a drone is a drone, and they, ha they feel about it however they feel about it. Um, but framing does matter. Of course, we'd expect it to because psychological research has shown this to be really robust. You basically want to tell people you're protecting them from tornadoes, not predicting a sunny day, if you want them to support your work. Um, which is why the media focuses on those threatening messages so much. Um, and we also find that purpose matters quite a bit. Um, people tend to like the idea of drones for uh, weather purposes, uh, not so much for package delivery right now. Um, but this is right now, people are just kind of learning about drones, so it's interacting with uh, political orientation, the actor who's using the drone, is it a, is it a private institution or a public institution? Um, and it's changing over time. So some of these things are fluctuating between our 2014 and 2015 study. And we are finding that trust matters. I might not have mentioned trust. That's my major area of study. But it's taking a while to get there because I'm a broader impacts person. Um, I would go over more findings, but I see that I'm out of time. I would go over more of what we're going to do next, but I see I'm out of time. So thank you. <laughs>